three, two, one. Hello, people of the interweb, internet people. Welcome back to Living Color with Matt Woodward. This is uh, episode six. Recording this here on a Friday night, just past seven o'clock here in Mountain Time here in Colorado. Uh, it's recording this on the eighth. Yep, May eighth. Sort of the end of the week here, and the sun's just sort of going down over the mountains, so I can see from my uh, my house here. Uh, just kind of wanted to check in here at the end of the week and sort of heading into the weekend and just sort of recap a couple things that you know I, I've I've seen and uh, that, that I've been thinking and just kind of want to just check in and see what you might be thinking on a few things or what or uh, maybe get you thinking on what I might be thinking you know <laughs> uh, yeah so one of them is just looking at like uh, just corona updates and seeing that even here in Colorado I'm not sure wherever you might be uh, I know I have people back home in Vermont and New York uh, listening and watching, and I appreciate all of you, and I love all of you back home, uh, and even just people out there on the internet in general. Uh, you know, here I don't know where you're at, and, and everything's obviously different, st- uh, you know, case by case and state by state, uh, but here in Colorado, it's like they're... In the stores, I'm sure it's nationwide at this point, but in the stores, if you go to like a Walmart or like a big grocery store, because that seems like the only thing really open at this point. Uh, but if you go there, you'll see each aisle uh, has like a, it's like, you know, do not enter or please, you know, shop this way or something, whatever it is. Like a green, it's like red, you know, do not enter if red, then green, shop this way. And each aisle is different. Obviously, you can't enter. It's not like you can just walk in each aisle. Cause you'll, you'll actually, I mean, I'm sure it's happened to even people out there by now. It's happened to me already. Like, I, I've just, you know, just been in the habit of just naturally walking in just random aisles. Like, oh, you know, my big ogre self, you know. And people kind of look at you and they're kind of like looking. That they kind of look at you. They don't say anything, obviously. Uh, but they kind of look at you and they kind of look down at the floor at the same time. And then you're kind of like, what the heck? And then you kind of look back and then you're like oh shit that said do not enter and it's like how is you know uh i don't know i I think that that's that's kind of one of the topics i was thinking is that you know is that is that gonna be like a new way of uh way of life after this is that gonna be like a new normal is that uh you know each aisle is gonna be you know you can't enter you only can enter at the end of this aisle or uh you know, you can't enter this way, you can only, or, you know, it's just, and, and if you notice the stores like Walmart, uh, they're actually like, they're, they're spreading out themselves. Like they're, uh, some of the products that they don't feel are as necessary. They're like moving. You'll notice that like I've walked into like a couple stores already and been like, where the hell, wasn't that over here like two weeks ago? And now it's over, it's over there. I, I don't know, you know, and like you got to walk like two miles to get toothpaste or whatever, but. You know, it's, it seems like things are changing and it's, there's going to be some new normals for sure. And one thing that's like interesting for me to see, uh, like grow, I mean, it kind of hurts what I'm trying to do, uh, eventually. Cause I have so many, like, I feel like ideas, creative ideas or like career ideas that I want to try to do. Uh, and I've always wanted to like start a company, maybe or own a company or, uh, I just always had the mindset that I can't be working 40 to, you know, 60, 80 hours a week and make 60, 70,000 my whole life. I know that's not a bad living for most people, uh, and they'd be happy to make 60 to 70,000, but if you're going to work that much, I feel like, uh, you know, you, you, you gotta be paid for what you're worth, you know? And, uh, that's why I feel like, uh, you know, not to get off on too much of a tangent, but you know, if you own something or if you're like the, you know, if you're a higher up, obviously there's a reason why they make more. Uh, it's not only experience, it's because they're probably, you know, pretty good at their job. I mean, obviously it's different company, com- company to company, as you, I'm sure you've seen in different, you know, with some of your manage- management uh, or bosses in your life or your career. But 
yeah, I just I feel like it's gonna be uh, different because it's, it's it's interesting to see that there's gonna be like driving concerts. That's why I was gonna get into what because you know I've always one of the things I wanted to do was maybe own a production company one day and do uh, maybe like live stream concerts and just do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, Oh, you know, involving like live entertainment, uh, including doing this show and starting the show. Uh, and now to see that they're doing like drive in concerts and or like drive up concerts where you basically just like you, you pull, it's almost like you're parking for a big show. You pull up in like a row uh, and you're just kind of just chilling in your car. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to, you know, link up the, there's going to be a connection, maybe Bluetooth at this point. Uh, between the mixer, you know, the house mix, with, you know, whatever's playing on stage or going through the, the speakers, uh, and to your car. But I, I'm not sure how it's going on. I think it's going on in Denmark or Norway, I believe, one of those countries. Uh, but it's even interesting just to see, because I, I believe uh, his name is Mark Ribolet. Uh He's sort of like an instrumentalist, and uh, he, he's super creative, and he's a funny dude, and He's charismatic as hell, and, you know, there's a reason he has a following at this point, and I, I, I even was following him. I th I'm not sure if I still do. I believe I do, because uh, some of the videos he posts are a little kooky, you know, but that's kind of like his niche and like his thing, which is cool. What's cool with me, but he's uh, he just announced the first ever uh, drive, like drive, essentially drive in concert, uh, concert tour. And I believe it's going to be happening in June or July. Um, I'm going to look up the details for it. But just to see that that's, that's even a thought right now. Uh, it really was. I had never considered anything like that before. You know, that was never even the realm of possibilities for me. Uh, it's just. It's interesting. Um yeah, just it's. Let's see, boy, there's a whole bunch of. Whole bunch of sites that are picking this up. Yeah, tour kicks off June eleventh in Charlotte, and then. Wraps up in Houston on July third. The Mark Ribolet tour, the drive-in. Concert tour. So that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I knew that a uh, possibility was, and it's no, another possibility, and it, it's kind of made official at this point, was that uh, Live Nation is going to try to have uh, crowdless concerts and maybe potentially stream those uh, and also do, like, drive-in concerts as well uh, and sort of get a, you know, sort of get a, a jump in, a, you know, jump ahead of the market, I guess, for, or I guess the, potential future market for it. That's something I had never obviously even considered before. Um, I can't believe that's like a thing to be honest with you. I don't even know how that's like a, I don't know if that's something I would ever even do, you know, because I, I don't know. I feel like there's, so, and, and there's so many potential problems that it creates, you know, like drunk driving, you know, is there, is there going to be, would there be like an uptick in drunk driving? I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe less because people have to drive to the show and, you know, obviously leave immediately after. It's not like a walk to the car or like, a uh, you know, after concert hang, you know, where you're just kind of hanging out in the parking lot with everyone like, damn, what a great show. And just kind of talking and meeting people. It's not like that. You're just going to be, I'm assuming you're just going to like, all right, show's over. You know, like pull out and peace, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that's even a thing, but it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, if uh, if people actually even even attend that or, you know, even even give that like a a chance. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe a start because people are just I feel like maybe, you know, a little starved for entertainment at this point. But uh, and, and then there's also like the drive in. I'm looking at just my notes here, like usual one. You know, then there's like, I see that, I remember the, the drive-in strip clubs in Oregon. And I see that and I'm like, is is that going to be something that's part of the future? That's like some super futuristic shit that like I would have never even 
you know, ever. I mean, I don't like you're gonna be sitting in your car like, like hell. It, I you know vibing in a strip club. I've seen photos of that in Oregon. It just looks so weird. It looks like that Miley Cyrus music video. I can't remember what song it was, but she. I think she sort of had like a, a uh, you know, like a music video where it was basically like a drive-through strip club. Um. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know where we're headed. To be honest with you, I don't know if there's gonna be concerts. You know, I really don't. I, I think I've said, you know, I've said it before on a few episodes already. I know this is only the sixth episode, but you know. And this is only Friday, May 8th, 2020, and it's the sixth episode. But, you know, I've said it before. I don't think that there will be, you know, concerts of, you know, 10,000 people, you know, or like these huge shows anymore. I, I'm Maybe not, not anymore. You know, obviously, I think it will give back. Um, but I don't think that it's going to be... I don't think it's going to be around maybe the rest of the year, you know? Um, and even still, I feel like they're, they know it too. You see, even Live Nation knows it. Their window is like closing on the year. Um, the summer, excuse me, the summer is, is, you know, a huge time for them to make, make money, like big money. And yeah, even festivals are canceling you know, now and, those that's those are huge money losses, uh, and they just uh, it's it's tough. And then just hearing at work, you know, I I just I hear uh, I hear some people talk at, at one of the places I work at, and and they're saying that they're hearing that there it there's potentially a chance that sixty percent of of businesses, of small businesses and restaurants won't be able to reopen after this whole coronavirus pandemic ends. You know, when, you know, who knows when it'll end, but I mean, even when things sort of, you know, slowly get back to normal, which they already, uh, I believe today, you know, their, their Colorado, the state itself is transferring to a safer at home method, I believe they're calling it. But even still to hear that 60% potentially, even, even, even a number at like 30 or 40 percent will be devastating you know even 20 a fifth of restaurants and businesses even 20 percent so to hear 63 fifths that is i can't imagine you know uh how what 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 people would do i feel like you know these these, these these are probably people that have like their, you know, their whole life invested in, in their, in these businesses, you know, and now they're just going to be not, they're going to be gone. They're not going to reopen. They're going to have to try to find a new line of work. Maybe even try to reopen another business, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't, hmm. That is tough. Um, and I know that, uh, we're, yeah, so like I said, they're, they're, they're transferring to that safer at home, uh, approach, um, or like some salons and barber shops and, uh, I guess some small retail stores are going to be open, um, or opening back up, um, you know, with restrictions still in place and guidelines or whatever, but, uh, you know, I, I think there's already been like just sort of the, uh, pressure from like some counties, I guess. I'm not sure, uh, which counties, I believe it's like the, I don't want to say it wrong. I believe it's the, tri it's like Tri County, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it, here we go. I, yeah, I just you, if you just Google Tri County, and I'm in Colorado, obviously. So Tri County, Tri County Health Offices in Aurora vandalized five times. So, and these people are like, there's, a, it's not just, I guess it's not just a few. It's a lot of people that are, you know, very pissed and you know, freaking out about like their businesses and, uh, 
just places not being open because I think they're I think some folks are sort of reading it as like a you know I don't want to say like a misinformation or like they're misinformed but you know they're 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 I don't really know what the hell they're freaking out about at this point. I really don't. I don't know what the hell they're freaking out about. And to be to be vandalizing the health off health offices, what the hell is that gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, how the hell is that showing your problems? I don't know. Like, and and they're saying like there you know, there will be severe consequences, and like they're talking about like starting like a civil war these counties against the state of Colorado and it's just like what people are losing their minds man and I've been saying it for a minute I know my mom if she's out there listening I know people out there if you've heard me talk just like I mean maybe not even recently but probably even last year too just on the phone or in general just I feel like the just I like I love Colorado you know but just some of the people I like you meet a lot of great people, but then just some of the people are just not only boneheads or, you know, bozos, but there's just a lot of road rage, I feel like. I get into more road rage, I feel like, than ever before here, you know? There's just people in the passing lane going fucking, you know, 15 under, just chilling. So you got to, like, you know, pass on the right, swir- you know, and it's like there's – it's, it's insane out there. There's, I feel like road rage, you can get in road rage every day. Almost every four miles or five miles, I bet. You know, especially if you're not on the highway. Even if you're on the highway, you're on the highway, you're almost guaranteed something. Like, it's just crazy, man. And and people are animated when they're. I, it's just. I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I've been. I've told people before. I don't trust anybody. I feel like anymore right now. It's just you know. Besides, obviously, like family and friends. But even then, you know, like I, I trust my trust my family and friends. But like people out. You know, I don't trust, like, strangers really anymore. I don't trust people I don't know, obviously. I'm not saying hi to anybody. I don't know nothing. I don't know you. I don't know you from Joe Blue. You know what I mean? I don't know a damn thing. So don't come up to me. Don't talk to me. You know? Not that people do anyway, but, you know, especially now more than ever. I don't know a damn thing. Uh, I just... I just hope things sort of like at least <laughs> remotely get back to some uh, somewhat a norm, you know. Uh, but one thing that you know I just wanted to touch on briefly that isn't a norm, or actually it is sort of a norm, and it's f- fucking disgusting that it is is that Ahmad Arbery killing is murder. It's beyond murder. It's disgusting, racist. Those those are racist pigs. Those people. I don't even want to say those people, those two Georgia scumbags names. And the fact that they murdered that kid, and I believe today, Friday, May 8th, I believe is his birthday. So God bless him. God bless his soul, man. For real. Like, I, I can't even imagine. And that, like, I, I didn't even want to see that video. I popped up. I'm on Twitter just so. I just pop up on Twitter and I yeah, you know, I see people retweeting it or, you know, being like justice for a mod I'm like, what's on mod Arbery? I don't know what that is, you know? And then I just see you, you scroll a little bit more and you're like, Oh my like there's a video there's video and the one I saw had like music in it, so like I didn't see the original obviously, but you still see enough. More than enough. Enough to like haunt you forever, really. It's something that I don't ever want to see again. You know, I don't want to see someone die on camera like that. That's disgusting. Especially this dude's just jogging, man. And those fucking two bozos are waiting at the end of the road like that. That is disgusting. And chilling in a truck. That shit looked like the, that shit looked like the sixties or something. You know, that or not even that looked like that just looked. Is disgusting. I came, that, that's not even the right word, disgusting. You know? I'm not even really trying to, like, swear or get, like, pissed off, like. But it's hard not to when you see some shit like that. And then those guys, that was in, I think, February or, or I believe it was February. And it's May. And they just got arrested, I believe, yesterday. 
or earlier this week. And I, I and I think the only reason was because the, you know, the video was released, and there was a obviously a nationwide outcry. You know, as there should be. And then they re- finally arrest those two bozos, and they're like, "Well, we're you know, we try to bring them to justice." Yeah, you should. You should, dumbass. You should have fucking done that in, what, February, probably. That is a joke. And God bless that guy's soul, man. Ahmad Arbery, I believe his name. Just want to get it right. Yeah, Ahmad Arbery. God bless him. He did not deserve that. And, and another thing is who the fuck is the dude filming? That video. How did he know to film? And he was filming for a minute. You know what I mean? Like he didn't just film the shooting. Like because he drove up on a shooting. He was filming the dude jogging down the road for a little bit. And then like all of a sudden you, you can see the truck or whatever. When they round that corner. The white truck and the dude chilling in the bed. Then the old the young dude chilling in the bed and the old fucking geezer with the shotgun outside of the truck waiting pretty much. How did that guy know to film though? You know what I mean? And he, and the thing is he wasn't filming with like a dash cam. So it was just filming everything on the road. He was filming with his cell phone because he was, he was all over the place with it. And you could tell cause he was filming it like this and not, you know, he was, he was going like this and driving. So how did he know to film it for like over over a minute like that? Or close to a minute. That is just... Something's not right. And I think that guy might have to f- face something too. Or I don't know. Something's not right. Seems like, like some sort of... Not set up, but something's not right with that. And that guy might have to face something. Or he might, he, he's going to for sure answer some, answer some questions. No doubt. Imagine filming that and then having that on your phone. That that would... Man. Anyway. God bless Ahmaud Arbery. And... I I'm, pray to God there will be justice for him. I'm, I can only hope. But you never know in this world. Um... I just want to see what we're at. Yeah, I kind of wanted to make this like a short one. This I wasn't really kind of wasn't gonna go off like this on so many topics. Uh, but I just I did have a lot written down. I was like, you know, going into this, I was like, I don't really know what I'm gonna talk about. But all of a sudden, you know, once I just get going, I just get going. You know, and yeah, I actually got enough more than I probably will, you know, be able to talk about here. Like I, you know, I wrote down like Elon Musk's kid with Grimes. Uh, Elon Musk and Grimes had a, had a baby. Congratulations to them. Uh, the name, I don't know what the name is. That is the weirdest name of all time, but, you know, bar none. Uh, the name is X and then AE, but it's not AE. It's like that weird symbol, AE, but they're like back-to-back or, you know, whatever, AE. X, AE, A12. And I believe it stands for X, Ash, Archangel, or something like that, and Whatever. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's an attention grab. Maybe they just want to be the first to have like a futuristic baby name like that. Cause they, they, I feel like they are. I've never heard of a baby name X A E twelve A twelve or whatever. Uh, but, but yeah, shout out to them. Uh, congratulations, Elon Musk and Grimes. I don't know either of you, obviously. Uh, I did actually almost open for Grimes. That actually reminds me, I. Did almost open for Grimes at Higher Ground in Burlington, Vermont in 2014. I was very close. And this was before she, she was dating Elon. Uh, but actually, uh, it's sort of a friend. I would call. I guess I would call her a friend. Uh, I was going to collab with her. Uh, uh, but this, uh, this, this tremendous producer I know named Toothache uh, opened for Grimes in 2014. I believe it was June 2014. Uh, and I didn't really know Grimes too much at the point. At that point. I knew like Oblivion and Genesis, I think. Uh, but I didn't really know her. 
Um, but she certainly kind of she she sort of popped off a bit, but then kind of you know ever since I mean ever since her and Elon have been together, it's been kind of a little a little wild. But congratulations to them, whatever their baby's name is. Shout out to them. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different topics. Um, like one of them is like how is Cam Newton trans? This is a hard transition. The hard one of the hardest transitions of all time, probably right. Going from Elon Musk and Grimes' ex A A twelve baby name to how in the world is Cam Newton not signed right now? Cam Newton was like a former MVP just a few years ago. I believe two thousand fifteen. So five years ago. And he's not signed right now. And then you see guys like Mike Glennon, I believe his name is the former NC State quarterback and Tampa Bay Buccaneer, I believe. Uh you know, you see he just signs a backup deal with the with the Jaguars, and you're like, Mike Glennon. Like, does, he sucks, right? Like, isn't, isn't he terrible? Like, wasn't he decent in college, but isn't he not great now? And all of a sudden you see, I mean, obviously Cam Newton, he's, he said now publicly that he's willing to be a backup, and he's probably, he might have to be. But it's almost a fucking joke that he has to be. Yeah, I'm swearing a little bit more on this podcast, <laughs> or on this show, podcast, whatever. I'm swearing a little bit more. I don't give a damn. As you can see, I, I'm not really giving a damn today. I, I'm just, I'm in my comfy, comfy, you know, comfy outfit. I got my castle and on represent, and I, you know, I got the long hair. I don't, you know, long hair. Don't care. Got the little scruff going here, but yeah, just I don't know, like how Cam Newton can be a backup right now. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. And I've seen it a little bit before, and I think I've heard Max Kellerman talk about it on uh, ESPN's first take. And that's, that's I, I think Cam Newton, uh, I think the Broncos should sign Cam Newton. Uh, you know, I, I, I do like Drew Locke, I, and Drew Locke does have a lot of promise. And I think he is the future. Uh, and even I know saying that is, you know, is somewhat dumb to be like, well, they should bring in, you know, a guy to, you know, stunt his growth and, uh, you know, take over the starter position, especially after Locke finished, I believe, four and one or something like that, and had, you know, he was solid at the end of the year. Um, you know, didn't wasn't making huge plays, but he was winning games, and he, I think he was a little bit more than a game manager. You know what I mean? So, uh, and that that was just in a, a rookie year, so especially coming off a thumb injury or, you know, injury in preseason. And, you know, so I think he is the future. But at the same time, I think this is uh, – this Broncos team, they can win now, you know. Uh, obviously, they have the Chiefs in the NFC West – or AFC West, excuse me. Uh, and the Chargers are solid. And the Raiders are, you know, getting better every year, it seems like, especially since they draft so high every year. But uh, – you know, the Chargers, they just drafted, you know, potentially their franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert. Uh, and they, they their roster, they were just in the AFC Championship game two years ago. You know, so I think the Broncos have a chance to win now. I believe they went 7-9 and nine last year, but there were like three or four games where they lost, at, you know, within the final two minutes. Uh, you know, they should have won the Bears game. I know that one for sure. And that, there was at least two or three games where they, so they they could have easily been nine and seven, ten and six, and potentially a wild card team. Uh, and I think, and that was with like Joe Flacco and Brandon Allen as their quarterbacks. You know, that was before Drew Locke. So I think this is, I think it's a team that they should, you know, they should make a move like get, bringing in Cam Newton, who's a bone, you know, a solid starter. He's he appears to be healthy, you know, his agent's obviously saying he's healthy, and, you know, Cam's putting out that he's healthy, but he looks healthy in his Instagram videos, and he's looking like a beast right now, and, you know, I think he has a, I think he could, poten- could potentially have a huge, you know, resurgence of a year, uh, and I think the Broncos will be a great spot for him, because I think they're, like, the team that, you know, they need, they need a playmaking quarterback, and I think Drew Locke can be that, but I don't think he is that right now. You know, and I don't think you. I don't think you want to waste any more years of Von Miller. Uh, I don't think you want to waste any years of like this solid defense, uh, and just having a solid young team right now. This is like a, a solid young team on both sides of the ball, and special teams is decent. You know, so especially you have a great draft. You bring in Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler and a solid line. So 
uh, you know, I think I think the Broncos should bring should bring in Cam Newton. I think it would be a tremendous addition. Uh, and I think he'd be just what they need to, to, you know, potentially get to the playoffs and maybe make a run. You know, especially in his, he in his career, he wants to make another run. You know, in a location and prove himself. And I think a best place would be Denver. You know, what would be better for, you know, for him than the team that you know beat him in the Super Bowl and maybe, you know, sort of, uh, not join who beat you, but you know, uh. Because we've seen the Broncos have sort of slipped in relevance, you know. They're not really considered a contender right now. But, you know, if Cam Newton comes along, all of a sudden it's like, damn, the Broncos, they have Cam Newton, and then they still have Von Miller, and they have a solid secondary. They got Boye, and they have, you know, had a great draft. And, you know, they bring in uh, they bring in the guard there from uh, Detroit, Uh I can't remember his name there, but um, I believe against what a G Graham, I believe, or something like that. Uh, but you know, the Broncos aren't far off, and I think bringing in Cam Newton would be a tremendous addition uh, and get them to potentially the playoffs and maybe make a run. Uh, but you know, I did have I have a ton of more. I feel like I could talk about, but I think it, you know. I'm just going to go for a couple more minutes here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of quick quick hit a little bit. You know, one of the things I think I've talked about before was that, you know, I wanted to sort, sort of start writing down my goals and all that and, you know, figure out what I'm going to do with my next move or, you know, what, what I want to have, you know, planned for each, you know, each scenario or situation. And, you know, I actually started, you know, I finally – sort of invested in that you know i went to walmart obviously and bought bought a little notebook and a pack of pens for two dollars you know and i've been writing every day since the start of may ever since may 1st i've written down you know what i've done at least once a day what you know in the time and written down just no matter how long or short or what it is i just wrote down but what i did that day you know or what i was thinking or feeling or what i'm doing tomorrow or how the rest of the week what i want to do the rest of the week just whatever it is and you know, already a weekend, and it feels really, you know, it feels good. I actually look, I almost look forward to it, you know. And it's almost like hold myself accountable because, like, even I was laying down last night, and I was like, right before I went to bed, I was like, did I, did I write my little journal today? And then I was like, oh shit, I don't know, I didn't. And I, you know, I hopped right up and I wrote, wrote almost, you know, six or seven lines, almost a paragraph. You know, it's like, I almost, I love it. You know, I wish I had done it earlier. You know, and. uh I kind of got that inspiration from Joey Diaz, you know, the church of what's happening now. Uh, you know, he was always talking about writing down your goals or, and, you know, what you want to do and, you know, how beneficial it can be and, you know, uh, gathering your thoughts and ideas. And, you know, then you kind of reflect on it and you kind of look back on where you were and what you were going through. And it's sort of like a whole thing, you know, it's, and it's all that for $2, you know, a pack of pen and a notebook, you know, like, so it's tremendous. I'm, I'm very happy. Shout out to Joey Diaz for that one. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to him for tremendous as well. I love that saying. Uh, you know, I just look at I'm you know in Colorado and I just see mo- Red Rocks all the time and I'm like oh, I would do any I would do anything to be working a show there you know right now or or you know I'm just attending a show there or anything like a baseball game anything at this point but I think maybe you know. I, I don't know if we'll, there'll be shows this year. I don't know if there'll be, you know, games where fans can attend. I know the NFL just released their schedule and they just put out tickets. And I actually looked at Ticketmaster because I saw the Buccaneers are coming out to Denver. Uh, and I'm very interested in going to that game just, you know, obviously because Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But not only that, you have the New Orleans Saints who are coming out to Denver uh, in November. So I just saw that and I was like, Oh, I wonder if tickets, you know, I wonder, but they, as soon as you click on, you know, the team's link there, it has like this huge warning and they're talking about refunds or, you know, potential changes of dates and all that. But it looks like fans are still buying these tickets. Cause it looked like, you know, even for the Buccaneers game, it looked like there wasn't a lot of tickets to choose from. And they were all like 400, $300, you know, and those are nosebleeds. And the ones even the second to second row or second level from the top or even six or seven hundred something crazy so 
I don't know. Uh, maybe they're releasing those tickets, you know, in in small quantities, I guess. You know, so yeah, you know, to sort of mitigate the amount of people, or you know, so it's not forty thousand people for the first game. You know, maybe like fifteen, ten at max. Uh, but even then, I don't think that would happen at a concert right now, and that's what that's what's bumming me out. Because uh, I was just going through the wow shows I worked last year, all the great shows. Uh, just like Billy Eilish last year, Wu Tang Clan on Halloween was amazing. Being front of stage camera operator for that, you know, Greta Van Fleet being a front of stage camera operator in front of Jake, the lead guitarist for Greta Van Fleet, that was incredible. Uh, and I think there may be. Maybe a DVD in the works. I'm not sure. I haven't heard really much. I hope. I mean, there was a huge camera crew for it, but just so many shows. Flume and uh, Interpol and Carsey Headrest, uh, Anderson Pock, Disclosure, Vampire Weekend being, you know, stage camera for that. Mac DeMarco, Thundercat, you know, uh, Twiddle, Pigeons playing head, uh, Pigeons playing ping pong, you know. That was my second day of work, and, you know, I just, it would be nice, uh, it would be nice to, you know, go to, go to some shows this summer, or work some shows, but just doesn't, doesn't seem like it's gonna happen, uh, you know, I just hope things sort of slowly normalize, and, you know, not get back to old, but I I feel like not be so like drastic. You know, I feel like it's been drastic the past few few weeks, and you know I think I was handling it better uh, at the start than I am now. I'm not saying I'm handling it bad now, but I feel like you know I'm I'm just single, living by myself, uh, and you know I don't mind it, but it can get boring and a little a little tough and uh, mentally, but. You know, I think like there's so many things that, you know, keep me active or can keep me, you know, going and positive and and that's that's kind of what I've been focusing on. That's kind of what I hope, you know, you focus on too. You know, that there's really all you can do at this point because, you know, you can't you can't stress over things you can't control and things that you that are out of your control and this I think, like, you know, obviously this whole thing was way out of our control. You know, there's nothing you could have done to prepare for this really. You know, it kind of just hits you over the head, and all of a sudden, you just kind of had to deal with the consequences, you know? So, uh, excuse me. You know, I'm hoping, I always say this, I feel like this is only the sixth episode, but I feel like I've said this, you know, I'm hoping to do more than once a week, uh, but right now it is only once a week. Um, but maybe next week, or, uh, you know, towards the end of this month, it'll be more than once a week, and that's what I'm hoping. Uh, I'm turning 27. I believe three, two weeks from today. Yeah, two week, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, I'm turning 27, and I don't know how to feel about it. Uh, I don't know how to feel about it. I feel like I'm getting old, but at the same time, I feel like I have a lot to, a lot to do, and a lot to look forward to. And I hope you do too. And I hope you're well. And I hope you're. Happy, healthy, and safe out there. I uh, hope you have everything sort of in order. I hope you're not struggling financially and aren't looking too much for the stimulus check. I know. I hope. I hope it's you know gotten to you so far. Uh, and if it hasn't, I'm sure it's on the way or getting there. Um, and even still, I think I think we're you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and we're we're getting towards the end of it, or you know. Maybe not towards the end, but there's there's hope, and uh, you know there's there's hope that uh, we will slowly get we'll slowly get there, and we already are. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's kind of what I wanted to talk about for the sixth episode. You know, I had a ton more. You know, I was gonna talk about the NBA making their announcements and this and that, and uh, trying to create a new rock group name. I still haven't. Really thought it because I'm trying to have like a whole new music project, but that's like a whole other, whole other topic for another day. Um, but yeah, I hope you're like I said. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're 
happy, healthy, and safe, and uh, aren't struggling and mentally, physically, or financially, especially, especially physically. I feel like I need to start running. And, you know, I still look normal. I feel like for the most part, I haven't really gained weight. It doesn't seem like, but I need to start running again. But that's just me, me uh, speaking for myself. But I hope, uh, like I said, I hope you're doing well. And uh, you take care of yourself. And I hope to see you back here maybe two times next week or maybe the week after. But I will definitely see you back here next week for episode number seven. Uh, But this was episode number six. And I appreciate you watching and listening wherever you might be. Uh, And for Living Color, this is Matt Woodward signing off. Thank you and have a great rest of the weekend, you guys. I love you. Take care. We'll